Yo, Finance is at the Goldman Sachs Tech and Media Conference. And of course, everybody's talking about artificial intelligence and what's next for media, but there are other things to talk about. And in this case, let's talk about the business of movies. We have lots of focus on all things Barbie, what might come for that franchise after that big release. Lots of eyes, of course, on Oppenheimer and what may happen to that franchise moving forward. Let's talk some movies here and the future of that business with IMAX CEO, Rich Gelfand. Rich, always great to get some time with you. We appreciate it. Yeah, happy to be here. Uh, I mentioned Barbie, I mentioned Oppenheimer, but I, I really have to start on what you're doing with Taylor Swift. Uh, where are you at with Taylor? How many theaters have sold out and what are ticket sales look like? Well, IMAX has about 350 sellouts for the opening weekend. I think um, there's still capacity left, but uh, the total pre-sales um, overall are over $65 million. I mean, it could be a hundred million dollar weekend, which is just mind boggling. So I think the idea was the Swift family knew the concert was so successful, but they wanted to make it more accessible. So rather than going direct to streaming or a pay window, they wanted to make it like you were there, but make it really um, affordable for a lot of people. So they went to AMC and they negotiated to do all of AMC's theaters. And then AMC went out to other players who they thought would add value. And in the case of IMAX, we're going to you know, kind of take the movie and enhance the sound and enhance the visual. So we're hoping it'll be just like you were there and couldn't be more excited. Can you take us inside that technology to the extent you could? How might watching Taylor Swift on the big screen look different because of that technology you, you possess? Well, in, in IMAX, what we'll do is we have a 12 channel sound system. So it, that's not typically what a cinema has. So we have to upgrade the sound and do different things to it to make it uh, really optimized for the IMAX system. And then on visual images, what IMAX does for any film not shot with IMAX cameras, we up-res the film, it's called DMR. So it goes through a process where we enhance the image. So when it's shown so large, instead of looking blurry, it looks super sharp. So I think it'll be really exciting to see Barbie up to eight stories high with incredible sound. Well, I know the Swifties back in the Yahoo Finance uh, newsroom will be very excited to hear that, uh, Rich. Let me ask you this too. Are we, are we looking at the future of the movie theater experience changing, looking through the lens of, of what Taylor Swift do, is doing here? Whereas, I mean, we're not just going to a theater to see a movie. There's other things that can happen in the movie theater. Well, I think you're looking through the future of the movie going experience through the lens of IMAX. So while the traditional movie business has been down from its peak in 2019, we're tracking to that level now because people really want to see premium experiences. So you can marry your two parts of your question. The Taylor Swift concert in itself was a breakout. And I think that's because people wanted a premium concert experience. There was a premium price. It did over a billion dollars. And in the case of uh, the movie business, I think people are flocking to IMAX also because they want something different than sitting in front of their home screen and, and, and streaming. But um, even you know, re-releasing Barbie later in a different way is something new. Um, we're doing a, a movie with A24 about the talking heads that comes out next Monday and there's a live Q&A around it that's going out. So I do think you'll see different variations and different alternatives to the traditional movie going experience. I got to spend some time at the conference here, Rich, with uh, Paramount CEO Bob Backish, and I didn't get the sense that this Hollywood strike is ending anytime soon. Now, he seems, my interpretation was, they have amount, a good amount of content in the backlog, but, but what happens to summer 2024? You know, as someone operating in the movie theater business, are you concerned that these players like a Paramount and Disney can't get the content they need to support the movie theaters? So IMAX is much more agile than almost any company in the, in the entertainment space. And in fact, we sort of see ourselves as a, a port in the storm. So um, for, for we, about 20, 25% of our content is local language content unaffected by the strike. Some of it is alternative content, um, which the type we just talked about, unaffected by the, uh, by the strike. 65% um, of our content is outside of North America, largely unaffected by the strike. And we're very flexible. So we have um, th this month coming up, we have Killers of the Flower Moon from Apple. We have Napoleon from Apple and Sony. 
So streamers are actually generating content. So I think after pandemic, there are a lot more sources of content than there were. Now, with that said, IMAX, we're a very talent-friendly company. We really want this to settle in a way that talent feels good about it and creates as they would. And, you know, I'm an eternal optimist, so I, you know, I refuse to put a negative head on it. You mentioned overseas. Now, I think investors may be not familiar with the fact of a big business in China. Now, a lot of headlines we've been getting lately, China slowdown. Have you seen that in your business? Um, no, I mean, China just came out of the pandemic at, in December of last year. And when everyone came out kind of a year before that, it took some time to get back to normal. So our China business is um, way better than it was during the pandemic, but it's on the road to normal. It's not there yet. And in terms of content, we play local content as well as content from outside of China. And right now we're playing a movie called Creation of the Gods. We've done $35 million in China. We released Oppenheimer in China the opening weekend in IMAX. We did 30% of the box office or about nine and a half million dollars. And um, we had another movie this year in China called um, uh, Wandering Earth 2, which we did over $50 million. So no, the mix might be a little different away from Hollywood films to local content, but we play both. So for us, we haven't seen major obstacles. We've seen a lot of just tensions between the US and China. Now, your company made an early bet on China has been, and has been winning. I mean, do you ever just get worried about your business not being able to operate the way you would like to operate in China because of these tensions? I mean, you know, I get asked that question a lot, but Apple does okay in China. Starbucks does okay in China. You know, auto companies do okay in China. I, I've been to China over 50 times, so I have a familiarity with it. So I think once you've been there and you see the weekly results, you don't react the way that's kind of caught up in the political landscape. I, I'm not particularly worried about China. 